Welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's virtual kitchen show. We're live again today. I, I always always forget to oops. I'll just blast you with some tunes first. Um, but I always forget to introduce myself, and I gotta keep doing this because everyone's like, who's this goofy guy that gets on these shows? I'm Jay Ashton, I'm the business resource and brand activation manager for Cisco Canada. And uh, I'm also the host of our virtual kitchen show and also our podcast show. And we are super, I mean, it's, guys, I'm sorry, it's super, but we are excited about, I, I don't know what the different word for super is, I guess over excited um, about today's guest. Back again, as always, one of my favorite chefs of all times is Elizabeth. Welcome back, Elizabeth. Oh, I, I muted you too, so there you go. Oh. I'm so bad. I was so adding an adjective to help you with super. <laughs> Were you? Oh, yeah. Sort of like exceedingly. I think I need that. Yeah. yeah. It's my, you it's you my expand your. Sorry? You have to expand your vocabulary there, Jay. <laughs> get a thesaurus out. Yes, I do. I do. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get it. Well, I gotta That's Google, your homework. Google more. Well, yeah. Next show, I will use a different word than super, but um we're excited we're i am excited to have you back yeah um we did lose one camera yeah. here in a second we just lost so one camera Sally so sally is, is going to be we lost one right camera, now. which is okay <laughs> it's like was waving to her we're okay uh, we're live so it's okay it's that's okay good. stuff happens when we're live but today we're going to talk all about tortillas um so maybe people don't know this but western foods um is a very large manufacturer of tortillas um, and we make both corn tortillas and flour tortillas in a huge variety of sizes. I and mean, we're definitely known for our bread, but this is another capability that we have that is, um, you know, really pinned down. And we actually make the Casa Solana brand for Cisco. So that's what cool. I'm going to be presenting to you today, uh, both flour tortillas and the corn tortillas, some interesting ideas. Um, some ways to use them in multiple applications, in multiple day parts, of course, so that um, our customers can really get the most out of their product and be able to reuse it and get great value. Um, I think when, one of the great things about tortillas is that they're um, relatively inexpensive as a carrier, but you, you can do so much with them. They're extremely, extremely versatile. We're going to talk a little bit later about how we handle them and the best practices, but um, would love to get started with some ideas and um, really help our, our customers and those people who are listening. Thanks for joining in, those who are listening and watching live um, of how we can kind of not just go with um, sort of Latin American or Mexican flavors. So tortillas can be used in so many different applications and I'm hopefully going to um, expand your mind today and show you some, some new ideas. So um, I'm going to start off with uh, our flour tortillas. So we have many, many different sizes of the flour tortilla. We have a six inch, an eight inch, a 10 inch, and a 12 inch. So something to, for everyone to choose from. Um, and if you're looking to do like a, a sort of serve your own taco um, or, or fajitas, like a six or an eight inch, of course, is the perfect size. And the 10 um, or the 12 inch is great if you're doing like a burrito or a wrap where you wanna fill the sandwich with a lot of fillings. Um, so that's where the different sizes kind of play in and it's just about your, your preference and um, what can kind of work. And that eight inch can kind of play in all um, of those traditional um, uses. But as I said, I'm gonna show you some new and interesting things. So we'll start off with our uh, six inch flour tortillas. So the tortillas come in a, a bag um, and you just pull out kind of what you need sawing them. It, it takes about, three to four hours to thaw. You want to be careful when the tortillas are coming out when they're frozen. The edges can be quite fragile. So don't like bump them up at, like the edges when they're frozen solid. Don't bump them up against things. Um, you want to kind of handle them a little bit gently until they're thawed. When they're thawed, they're actually really like you can use and abuse them. But when they're frozen, um, you need to be careful, especially of the edges so you don't crack your edges. So just take them out of the freezer of the case um thaw them on a flat surface for about three to four hours so they're really well frozen it's best to thaw them ambient not in the fridge um the fridge i'm, I'm i've been 14 years trying to uh, cure people of their 
um, putting bread and bakery products in the fridge, like the cardinal sin, the worst thing you can do, it actually dries out your, your products. So you want to keep them uh, at room temperature as much as possible. So thaw those at room temperature. And then um, you'll notice they kind of stick together. It's just because of the moisture between the layers. But what you're going to do is sort of roll them, roll the bag like, like a wave and loosen them. You do it from both sides and then they're loosened right from the center and you'll have no problem peeling them off um, as you go about using them. So that's a little tip to uh, ensure that your sweet teeth don't stick and that you're getting edges that aren't broken. And then of course, just keep them covered. That's also very important to keep them covered um, while you're using them um, so that they don't start to dry out and crack. Um, stale about tortillas is when they, they crack and they can't be used. But of course, if they're dry, you can of course cut them up. But uh, you want to get you the best possible outcome from the beginning. So I have corn and flour. So this is the six inch flour tortilla. And I'm going to make what's called a flauta. So that's the, the, the Spanish word for flute. But yeah, I know I just said I wanted to show you something other than Mexican, but I'm gonna, it's, this is like combining a bunch of things um, together. So I'm gonna take the six inch tortilla and I'm gonna make a flauta. And what I've done is make, I'm gonna make it taste like um, elote, which is the Mexican street corn. So do you love that, Jay? Is that, for me, that's one of my favorite things. And because it's August, I'm eating corn like absolutely nonstop. So I love to do it in different ways. So I, I toasted the corn. Yes, I do like Mexican street corn, just so you know. Toasted the corn and then mixed it with some chicken, changing it up a little bit. Um, so we've got the, uh, the corn, which I roasted and kind of blackened a little bit. I mixed that, cooled it, and then mixed it with some shredded chicken and some uh, jalapenos, pickled jalapenos that I cut up, a little bit of cheddar cheese, and um, some cilantro. So all the things that you chop, the elote with, I put inside the filling and I added some chicken. Um, so we're gonna roll it, hopefully you can see this, but come over here. Um, we're gonna roll it, not too much, it's about three tablespoons worth of filling. And this is just an appetizer portion. So you wanna kind of tuck it under and then roll it back in on itself. So it's really nice and tight. And then here's another trick, which is to put just a little bit of cheese, like literally a pinch, just on that edge there and roll it over so that it seals the edge. So I'm gonna put that on my griddle along with some others that I've previously made. And we're gonna see it's just a little bit of time. You can't fry these if you want to tuck in the ends. Um, you can fry them. Uh, I, I like this, this way because it looks a little bit more rustic. Um, but you just wanna get a nice little bit of color on them. And so you're just gonna roll them on the board. Again, the cheese side down first. So that's what makes the seal. And then I've got all my toppings and we're gonna do this as a takeout. So I've got here a little takeout container. I've got some pico de gallo and some guacamole. Oops, I'm sliding here. Some guacamole already in my cups. Um, my serving cups ready to go. So I pre-portion that. And this is, oh, there we go. I'm just aching a little loud to brown. I had my griddle accidentally turned down. We'll just get those back up and hot. Um, and maybe I'll start the next thing. I'll talk about the corn tortillas. So the flour tortillas are made on a press. And um, they're then twice baked. So once the, we make the dough, of course, and then we press them um, under pressure. And then they are twice baked um, before being cooled, of course, and packed. So they get, have a really nice like pliability to it. They almost have a little bit of stretch. We call it the pliability, but it, it allows you to really, um, you know, fill them with fillings and like just put a little bit of tension and pressure on them so you can wrap them really well. Um, if you're struggling, you can also get a damp towel and lay that down first and sort of roll it in your damp towel and get that extra little bit of um, leverage on it. But they're really pliable, really durable, 
they're soft and, and, and supple and they're tear resistant. So they're not going to, they're not going to fall apart there. I teared it. Cause it's, I put a lot of pressure on it, but it's not going to, if you're just putting, you know, rolling it and things like that, they're going to um, hold them, hold their integrity really, really well. And um, the corn tortillas, here we've got some that are actually um, cut out. So it's made, there's only three ingredients in our corn tortillas. It's uh, white corn, stone ground, uh, yellow corn, and um, water. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot the third ingredient. And water. So um, you, it's great when you can pronounce everything and you know exactly what's in it. Um, the, the corn tortillas, just by their nature and how they're made, they're a little bit drier. They're not quite as moist um, as the flour tortillas, but you can really um, do a lot with them as well. You can roll them. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, Jay. You can also use them here like I have in the traditional so taco. I um, you know, you double up with it so that you can uh, get a, a little bit sturdier taco with a base. You can fill them with anything like, of course, like something authentic, like carne asada. Um, I've done it with pulled pork here, but um, or even dessert. So that's another thing was sweet and savory. Um, you could do a sweet um, corn because corn itself is a little bit sweet. So you could add a, something sugar, some sweet caramel to really take it up a notch. So that's a great thing to do with the tortillas. So I'm just throwing them out is you can cut them and fry them or um, fry the corn as well. So just looking at my uh, flautas, we've got them pretty much done here. So when it's a hot griddle, it, it uh, grills up really nicely. You can do it on all sides. And what's great because the chicken is, is really holding up. So it's getting warmed, but it's not gonna fall apart, which is great. What's your favorite way to eat a tortilla, Jay? What? <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, you know what? I'm I'm a huge fan of wraps. Um, I like wraps. Mm -hmm. and okay. You throw everything into it. Love it that way. Um, I do love throwing them on the griddle like that. You know, and warming them up. I am not a yes. fan of a cool or cold tortilla. Just I think I lived okay. off of them back in the early '90s, uh, and it just ruined <laughs> it. Ruined me. <laughs> it ruined like, me. You know, wraps no more. Out? I have a wrap for like yes. back in the 90s when wraps came out, right? Yeah, everyone had a wrap on the menu. Then everybody um, discovered them. Everyone discovered them. That's when I think I lived off of them for a while. And I just I can't do them. That's I can't fair. do them cold. You gotta do them hot, just like you did. Yeah, I really, I really enjoy that. I really I like them both ways, but I really enjoy them um, warm because you're getting the different textures. You're getting a little bit of the crispy. Um, but it's still soft. And of course, how the, the fillings warm up is really great. So here I finished my little flautas. Um, they're like handheld, portable, perfect appetizer. Um, now that the sports are back, um, you can, you know, easily order these um, through delivery app. And you've got all your garnishes, accoutrement, and uh, you can enjoy. That's, so that's awesome. my elote, very, very elote flauta. Yeah, it's very, very cost effective. Um, yeah. And that's, that's what a lot of people don't know about the tortillas is that you're getting great value. Um, so you're gonna get great margin because you don't have to spend, I mean, you saw what I put in. It was a couple tablespoons of filling that had, you know, some mm -hmm. rotisserie chicken, a little bit of cream cheese, a little bit of cheese, not even that much cheese. Um, so you're keeping your costs really low. So that's something you could really, um, you, the guacamole is probably gonna cost you as much as the filling is costing you right now. Exactly. Um, yeah, so you can really get great value. Well, I've noticed guacamole has come down into more reasonable pricing right now. It just mm. must be those millennials. They've knocked the price down. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Them and their avocado <laughs> toast. My generation is exactly. avocado toast, you know? <laughs> Which I do um, love. I'm also going to show you, Jay, another way to roll them in a dessert application. So just two seconds. Well, this is I've another got, way I like to do this. But here, um, this is sort of a version of enchilada. Uh, but I made it with banana. So I took a banana and I rolled it. This is the eight inch size, rolled it and um, sorry, on my plate. rolled it and I baked it and made a custard and I baked it. Now it, it was, it, this is something you can easily make in advance. 
and serve. You can serve it with ice cream, of course. Oops, forgot about my, I'm just gonna warm up my chocolate, just a second. Mm. Sorry about that. So we're gonna pull out um, the baked, um, I'm gonna call it a, we're gonna call it a roll up, a fruit roll up. You could use any fruit for this. Of course, it doesn't have to be a banana, but anything you have on hand, um, you can see it's really beautiful and caramelized. With the custard really sets. So you're gonna get that. Elizabeth, I can't wait we can do this in person. <laughs> I know, me too, Jay. Me too. So and of course you wanna have some extra little contrast. So you could do this with peanut butter, banana and peanut butter, come on, the best. Um, this is a chocolate hazelnut spread. So I'm just gonna mm -hmm. drizzle this over top. So this was one small banana. My chocolate sauce is not. There we go. Uh, one small banana. And then I'm gonna get, you could do toasted hazelnuts on top of here, more chocolate, chocolate chips. I'm gonna do a little, what I call crispy crunchies, which is just granola. But I love that you can use it, like not just for yogurt parfaits, you can use it for other types of applications so that it brings texture in. So there we go. We've got a fruit roll up, an adult fruit roll up <laughs> um, that has a whole pan okay. in it, some custard, and it's made of, tor you wouldn't know it's a tortilla. You can also make your tortillas um, like stacking them on top of each other. So if you wanted to do this like more like a traditional bread pudding, you just get a, a pie pan, maybe use an eight inch um, tortilla and you can put layers of things between so that it stacks up and then pour your custard on top and bake it. And that's a really cool and you can cut it in wedges. So that's another really interesting serving suggestion for desserts. That's really cool. And I'm glad you brought up desserts because we um, need people, we need people yeah. buying desserts. Absolutely. Well, and it's, it's like a way to offer, again, reuse something if you're doing a burrito, you're doing a, a quesadilla, you're doing a wrap already, um, you know, try to use it in the dessert day part so you're not bringing in extra um, extra skews, right? Mm -hmm. And you can make it work with, like I said, it's any kind of flavor profile you want. You could put a cheesecake in there. You could wrap, you know, you could do like deep fried ice cream or wrap the cheese, like a piece of cheesecake or brownie in there and fry it or pan fry it. Um, and, you know, any kind of fruit sauce, it doesn't have to be, uh, like the banana so it's just whatever wherever your creativity can, want, wants to take you and whatever you have on hand that you can really make you know you could you could easily sell this for six dollars and it was one tortilla uh, one banana a little bit of custard um which is probably the most expensive thing in there um with the eggs and the cream a little bit of sauce and um you know some nuts or something on garnish so very very cost effective to produce uh, and you could get a great margin on on that kind of item um, I'm gonna make, this might be something a little different for you, Jay, but I'm gonna actually make now a burger. Oh, you know what I forgot? Jay, I, I forgot my garnishes. I have to make oh my, my street corn look like street corn. I got my, uh, sorry, I forgot. Oh. And I got my cotilla cheese. There we go. Now it actually looks like street corn. So I apologize what for that. that. What was the red stuff? I just. Oh, that was smoked paprika, and I'm gonna do some tahini, which is my favorite, my favorite seasoning, the tahini. Have you had that before? No. No. Oh, it's so good. So it's like a light, mild chili with yeah. uh, lime and salt already built in. So if you go to oh. like California or Mexico, and you have like a chamoy or a um, a fruit, like you know the fruit where they put the chili on top. Yeah. So this is the seasoning that they use. So it's already got the salt and the chili. Yeah, and the I, don't part of Mexico, in. I don't know what part of Mexico you went, but I backpacked through there in the 90s. Oh, yeah? And yeah, I went to every place that you weren't supposed to go. Oh, <laughs> I went. But you were safe. You came back safe. It's okay. I did. I'm not kidding you. I think that was the year that they kidnapped people. So uh, oh in some gosh. of those areas that we were. So it was a little scary, but the food was amazing. And, yeah, uh, no, it is, it is amazing. Many, but it's many, like many. a sweet, savory, kind of unexpected with fruit, right? 
that yeah, people just yeah, don't yeah. think about. So here's no, another I thing that you. most people don't think about using tortillas for, which is for burgers. We know them for sandwiches. And we know them that traditional like wrap the sides and then roll. This is a little bit different. This looks a little bit more like a flour. So I'm just gonna mix up, I forgot to do this before, but I'm gonna mix up my chipotle mayo here with my slaw. And mix that up. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna do like a what I'm gonna call, call a smokehouse burger, but it's got a little bit of a twist. So of course it's in a tortilla, but it's got a little bit more twist. So I'm gonna get, I'm just gonna go over here and I grab my uh, burger patties that I just warmed up just a minute ago. I'm gonna get some apple. This is a little bit unusual, I think, but adds a little bit of sweetness here to this build. Apple. So Apple, yeah. Well, I mean, we all put like, oh, I put apple in uh, coleslaw. So I love that kind of sweet, yeah. crunchy, um mix so when you're assembling your burger like this you want to put the things that are that you don't want the heat to get to on the inside so i put the burger on, on the bottom then i'm going to put some of the slaw mixed with the chipotle mayo Oops. there we go and then i'm going to put the apples slices of apple we're gonna get a nice crispy crunchy mix in here. Um, and then it wouldn't be like a super duper smokehouse burger if I didn't put bacon in here. So I'm gonna add a couple pieces of bacon. And what the heck, some crispy onions. So we're getting a lot of different textures going on here, a lot of different flavors, but it's all gonna work together, I promise you. And then I'm gonna do some pulled pork. So I, I just like really saucy, wet pulled pork. I like it a little drier. Mm. I'm with you on that. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't want to eat sugar and barbecue sauce. <laughs> I want to eat the pork. <laughs> so we, we um, drink it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. I like and it's like swimming. It's like swimming. So here we go. So just make sure your, your stack is kind of like stacked on top of each other. That's important for later. And the last thing you're going to put on top is a slice of cheese. So the cheese is going to become like your glue that holds your tortilla together because you're probably wondering, how am I going to make this? Well, I'm going to make it almost like, actually, I'll start with the side, almost like a little, um, can you see? There. Okay. Um, so we're almost making it like a flower. So start with one side and then sort of a quarter of the way, pull the next side and then the next side, the next side the next side, and then the last side until you have oops, about like a pentagon. It's almost like a pentagon. Do you see here? Mm -hmm. How I folded it in on itself. And you're going to put the cheese side down first, and that's what's going to become the glue. So this is a this is our tomato wrap. tortilla. It's nice, it's nice and big, 12 inches. And this one, you can definitely, so I'm gonna do again on one side, sort of like, almost like a quarter turn. And mm -hmm. it looks a lot like a flower. But like I said, I'm gonna put the cheese side down so it acts as the glue and holds that together. So the tomato tortilla um, has a really nice flavor to it. Um, and it's got a really bright color. Um, and this is the natural coloring. It's made with tomato paste and um, dehydrated beet root powder. So it's we're not using red dye number 72. Um, it's got some natural <laughs> colorings in it and it has a light flavor. It's not so tomatoey um, that you can't put things that wouldn't go well with tomatoes in it, um, mm -hmm. but it, it definitely has a little bit of uh, flavor to it, which is nice for rather than just the, the same old white tortilla, right? Like you can, it's great that you can switch it up and uh, especially for wraps and things, here I've, I've done a little bit more of a traditional, here's a rainbow wrap that I don't think you can see from here. Here's a rainbow wrap that I've done with our spinach tortilla. And this really? also has dehydrated spinach in it. So you see all the beautiful colors. It's got hummus, it's got a lemon tahini dip with herbs on the side here. Um, so 
You can, of course, do that with any kind of, this is a vegetarian sandwich, but you can, of course, do with any kind of meat sandwich. But just to be able to offer, and you're going to leave it until it just crisps up and the cheese melts. So then you can turn it. Let me turn that down just a little bit. Um, so you're going to see my burger and how it's, I'm going to cut it inside to show you um, how things how things look. Actually, let me just grab my that to get those. I need a little bit of my toothpicks just in case. Yeah. So we're just going to wait for the tortilla just to crisp up a little bit. You can see it's something different. It's it's totally portable. It travels really, really well for delivery. So this is a great option. It's very easy to roll. It works better in a hot application rather than a cold application. But um, it's just something really different. And you could call it like a flour. You could put use it for breakfast. So it's not just for burgers uh, or sandwiches. But think about it like with bacon and eggs and things like that, a hash brown patty in there. Um, so that you're just giving people something new and something different. Exactly. I love All it. Right. It's all together in one, too, right? It's nice and handy. Well, like it's really hot right now, but it's it's great because like I'm not gonna drip, right? Like I can eat the whole thing as like a pocket. Oh, sorry, it's hot. <laughs> and it's not gonna drip out on me, right? Like all my fillings aren't gonna come out. It's sort of like a self-sealed uh, little pocket. So I'm gonna use my toothpicks just in case. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the inside of my smokehouse, super duper smokehouse burger. You can see right there. It oh, holds nice. it all in. It's easy to eat. And nice. it's something like now for something completely different, right? Very right, cool. So put that there. Um, and last but not least, we're going to go back to the land of dessert um, and frying tortillas. So I already talked about frying like tortilla chips. We can also make tortillas into donuts or a version of donuts. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> Except I'm going to do it. Here, I'm going to, oops, sorry, I have to move out my trays. Just I've got people there. commenting here. So Owen just said, mmm, burger wrap looks good. So Owen, thank you. I know they look awesome. Oh, yeah. You know what the I'm glad I people are watching and, and tuning in. Well, just the plate coverage, but also just on that pin board, and, like, there's a lot there, so obviously it's going to help reduce mm -hmm. you know, your starch if you're using a potato or fries or something like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. You don't have quite as many, um, quite as many um, garnishes and filling, um, not fillings, um, fries or salad, because it is quite a large. It looks like a significant portion, and it's going to fill mm -hmm. you up. And then your favorite, um, so I'm gonna one take of your my biggest fans just said, "Oh wow, looks so good." Thanks, Kermit. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody's now. I'm gonna I'm gonna convert everyone to the the tortilla burger. I mean, we make amazing yeah. burgers at Western Foods, but like uh, you, can, you know, know what? the tortilla the is something like, different. Yeah, it's something different, but also I think it's gonna travel very well as as well. That's that's exactly it. It'll hold in everything. Um, be be careful not to use things that are too too wet. Um, so you wouldn't want to do like sautéed spinach in your burger or something that's gonna leach more like a lot of moisture. Um, which is why I use like the crunchy slaw, um, but it's gonna it's gonna hold up really really well to take out. And as I said, with the eating experience, it's gonna be like self sustained, self sustaining or all encapsulating. So I'm gonna take my um, this is my eight inch flour tortilla. I'm gonna cut it in half. Uh, I'm just using white. So in in our in our white size, I think I mentioned that we have six, eight, ten, and twelve inches. And then in the flavored varieties, we have the tomato, um, the spinach, and a whole wheat, um, which is nice for if you're wanting to feel a little bit healthier, um, get some more fiber uh, in your diet, you can use the whole wheat variety as well. Um, but the white is great because it's, it's a little bit neutral. So I'm gonna take mm -hmm. the, actually, I don't know, you can't see, so I'm gonna move this. Um, you're going to take your half tortilla, you're going to lay it on your board and fold it in half just so you know where the half goes. Um, I'm going to take this, my, for this beignet, I'm going to do about a tablespoon of ricotta that I've sweetened and added a little bit of, uh, lemon zest to, but you can do like, you can, this is the most versatile thing. You can do whatever. I have 
peaches as well. So I've caramelized some peaches, some Niagara peaches, because it's August. So like I eat peaches and corn like on repeat. And that's all I want to eat and blueberries. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of egg wash. And I'm going to seal my edge. Just You can do use just water as well. I like using egg wash just to make sure it seals, but you can use water. Just dip your finger in water and run along the edge. And then I'm just going to seal my edges. So you don't want to put too much filling in here. Um, just enough to make it, uh, you know, a little bit of surprise, but still able to close it. So here you go. I've put um, three little slices of peaches, a tablespoon of uh, ricotta, and uh, sealed it up. And then through the magic of the internet, um, I've finished some. So we've got, I fried these. Oh my God. Uh, you can see they puff up and they mm -hmm. hold their shape. I sprinkled them with um, some uh, pumpkin spice sugar. So I wanted those uh, flavors of like nutmeg and ginger and cinnamon that go really well with peaches um, to go on the outside. And I'm just going to plate this up with Use a blue plate here. So huge. I'll show you actually what's yeah. inside. Yeah. Um, and frying them is really easy. Yeah, look how big it is. This is half a tortilla yeah. and a little bit of filling. So I'm going to show you what's on the inside. You can see it's just, can you see that? Yeah. Just like a little bit of moisture or filling, sorry. Um, you can serve like half or like three. Um, but then again, it's one and a half tortillas. I made a um, a maple caramel glaze. So I'm going to just, uh, you know, do some of this on top. There we go. Or you could serve this just as a dipping sauce um, if you want. Uh-oh. Here's my powdered sugar, of course. Could have done that first. But just to make it rain, a little bit of powdered sugar. But there you go, you have a really, really simple dessert. It takes about 40 seconds to fry. Oops, I'll show you first before I put it down. 40 seconds to fry, and you can use whatever garnish you want to in the uh, filling. You could use cream cheese, of course. Um, you could make it like a cheesecake. Um, and whatever fruit, you don't have to be fresh fruit. It can be frozen fruit, of course. Um, just make sure you're, you're um, that's another caution, is just to make sure you're making, you're using filling like ricotta uh, and even cream cheese a little bit better, but watch the fruit. Um, you want to sort of just make it to order. So don't make them too far ahead. You saw it's really simple and it's something you can just have all your mise en place ready and then just um, quickly uh, assemble them to, uh, you know, when you're firing the order. But um, mm -hmm. you, you want to just make it with any, with any filling. So you can use jam, you could use like something that comes in a bucket that um, like lemon curd, lemon pie filling, um, any kind of pie filling that has fruit. Um, you don't want to not take too much slurry with you, but you can, you know, just mm. use pre-prepared jam. So it could be even like a breakfast. You could make it like a, a breakfast um, or brunch item as well. You an appetizer or sort of a pastry. Um, so it's really, really, really versatile. That's really cool. So yeah. easy, so easy to do, and great appetite or great. I was going to say breakfast appetizer. Um, but definitely something that you can do after your meal, and I love it. And we talked yeah. about this the other day on one of my shows. Is this also what a great item? Because yeah. we definitely are coming into the fall here, and we do know that takeout is going to explode yeah. again this fall. But what mm -hmm. a great item that it costs a lot that you can surprise people with in their takeout bag as a little yeah, freebie for or sure. surprise, right? And for sure, I love it. Wicked and or great. Something just like, simple, just, just simple to prepare. Like that's the thing is yeah. you're using it for something for another meal part. So why not bring it into dessert? Um, everybody loves fried things. So you have your, you have your beignet. This is, you know, peaches and cream, mm -hmm. but you could do like, um, you know, cherry cheesecake or like black forest with like a cherry pie filling, some chocolate chips and um, some cream cheese. Um, yeah. I also want to uh, open people's mind to like presenting tortillas in a different way. So um, here I've done a stack. For breakfast so i'm running out space here um 
I've done a stack. So I just um, toasted my corn tortillas and added like a little bit of fried ham, some Emmental cheese, some spinach and a fried egg. And you could, you know, have a sauce, like a, a bechamel style sauce or a, a cheese sauce on top um, and crisp it up in a different way. And um, so think about stacking them. You can also think about like rolling them in different ways, making it into an egg cup. So here's, forgot to get this egg earlier, but you can put it into like a muffin tin on the other side. And while it's still pliable, make like a flour here, bake that in the oven quickly so that it firms up. And then you've got yourself a little carrier, which you could put an egg in, <laughs> right? So it's just, it's just getting creative in different ways of, reimagining your tortillas so that your guests, you know, they're not any wiser that you're using the same product in multiple applications and it's keeping your cost low, it's reducing the amount of things that you have to inventory and it's um, making delicious items um, that your guests are gonna crave and come back for. So I hope you got some new ideas today, Jay, and, um, or even lasagna. So that was the one more thing I was gonna say is, you can make a layered, yeah, take a baking dish. Um, it doesn't have to be Mexican flavored, <laughs> um, but you can definitely use like shredded chicken, cheese, beans, salsa, all those things and just keep layering it just like you would a lasagna, bake it in the oven for half an hour and mm -hmm. you can cut squares out of it. And it is like lasagna. Really? Um, you could do that for breakfast as well. Um, so again, it's just getting, getting creative, thinking about um the same products in 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 new and innovative ways that's awesome i i did well italians will love you it's a little crazy <laughs> for the italians in the family doing a little lasagna i love that idea i'm gonna have to do that too wicked very cost effective yeah. love the ideas brilliant ideas Gary. oh well, thank you so much jay and i hope it's opened up people's mind to the Casasolana tortillas and just like what's available, try them. Um, they, they taste great and they are going to be a really consistent product for you. You're going to get great value with them and they are going to help you like take your menu to the next level. Awesome. Well, we're going to put these ideas up because please don't eat them. Sally, yeah. no eating until chef takes a picture. of them. <laughs> um, That is the photo. We'll put them up. Also, thanks again so much, Elizabeth, on your ideas. I just love, I can't wait every day when we have you on your show because your ideas are just awesome and they're simple and they're going to help restaurants out with being cost effective. And um, we need to look at that and we also need to look at takeout and just love these ideas. Yeah. And love it. We reinvented the tortilla shop <laughs> and Absolutely. it's used. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Thanks, Jay. Well, all the best. Thanks, everyone. Thanks again. Have fun with tortillas. Yeah. You have fun with tortillas. Uh, just so you everyone knows, we have another show tomorrow. Oh, Elizabeth, I forgot to mention, you're number 50, 49th show. Your 49th show today. Uh, tomorrow we have number 50. Hey, you've been busy. Yeah, it's, it's been a busy summer. Uh, <laughs> so we have our show back tomorrow, uh, number 50. And uh, you know what, Elizabeth, thank you so much for participating. My pleasure. Over all these times and being a part of those 49 shows. Uh, we're excited to see more from you. Plus, uh, next week we open our healthcare show as well. Um, we have uh, also produce talks coming every second week on Thursdays, coming up here right away next week as well. So, more to come on our Cisco Virtual Kitchen show. And all the best. Um, tune in every week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. Um, we are going to continue to bring you great ideas this way. And also on our podcast show as well, up on iTunes and Spotify. Check us out. We've got some pretty cool, I think 65 shows there too, of different guests we've had in there and talking about multiple different things that we've talked about in that area. So once again, Elizabeth, all the best. Weston, you guys rock. Um, we love you to death and Thanks, all the great Jay. things you do. So Appreciate your support of Weston Foods and happy cooking, everyone. Happy cooking. You bet. Thanks, Elizabeth. Bye, everyone.